This is the next video in my series on Adobe Captivate 2019 Update 2, also known as version 11.5. Today we're going to be talking about the new Assets window. This is not necessarily a new feature, but it's been greatly updated and improved upon, and we'll go over that today. I'm starting from a responsive design project, but the Assets window is also available for uh, non-responsive projects as well, also known as blank projects. The first thing you'll notice is that the assets icon has been moved to the upper right hand corner of your interface next to your library and your properties inspector on the main Captivate toolbar. Let's go ahead and click on assets and see what the new window has to offer. So when you first open it up, you'll start with the uh, projects category. But before we start getting into the specifics of the individual categories, let's take a look across the top here. So we have assets followed by discover and then followed by downloads. Uh, before we get into the assets that, that are here already, let's click on discover and see what happens. So you'll see this window pop up here. This is a just a warning really to let you know that you're leaving Adobe Captivate and heading over to a third party online service. And obviously the terms and conditions of those third party online services may be different. And they're just making sure that you understand that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click understand. And now we're brought to the Adobe Captivate asset library window here. And you'll see of course a whole bunch of different sample projects and uh, different templates that you can use. Uh, the main area to be concerned about though are the actual template dropdown where you can select a variety of different subcategories to choose from and the characters subcategory as well where you've got uh, either a choice between photo realistic or illustrated. And this is pretty much similar to what we had before. Not too much has changed here, just a little bit of uh, the appearance. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a photorealistic character. In this case, I'm gonna choose from the medical industry. So I'm just gonna scroll down until I find an image that's appropriate here. I'm gonna choose Carla. We're gonna put her into this slide here. And of course, when I click on Carla, I'm presented with a whole bunch of different poses to choose from. So I'm just gonna find one that I think is appropriate. Uh, I'm gonna choose this one here, and that looks good. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and you have an opportunity to download this. So let's go ahead and download this image. You'll see a progress indicator at the bottom here, and once it's fully downloaded, you'll see a download status window, and you can close that. Now this is where a lot of people traditionally have gotten stuck. Okay, where's my picture of Carla I want to use? Uh, here over in Downloads, you'll find that if we go to Downloads and then Characters, we'll see that image of Carla. And I can choose either a close-up image, a half image, or a full image. And I can also choose to use a high resolution image as well, uh, which I would recommend. So I'm going to go ahead and insert Carla into the slide that I've created. And of course you can move it about, it's like any other transparent PNG file, you can resize it so that it's appropriate for your particular project here. So I'm gonna have her uh, be a little bit larger on the screen than before. I'm gonna go ahead and click the assets icon again. And you'll notice that uh, I'm returned to the same location where I left the assets window. Uh, I can also go back over to Discover and also be returned uh, to the eLearning Brothers character library here. Let's go back to Downloads though and let's assume that now I'm looking for an image. So if I choose images from here, you can see I've not downloaded any content yet. I could click here, but I can also click Discover. And this is going to bring me, instead of to the eLearning Brothers, to Adobe Stock. So I can go and take a look for an image. Let's say I'm looking for something related to medical equipment. We'll do a search for that. And let's find uh, an image that would be appropriate. This one looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and save that to a computer, I, to the, my computer. I previously licensed this one before, that's why it didn't give me that confirmation. 
but it's uh, downloaded and it's found, of course, now in my download section. So let's go to downloads. I may need to click over to another category and return in order to get access to that, but that's fine. Let's insert that image. And I'm going to resize this a little bit because it's a different aspect ratio and size as my course here, but that's not a problem. And we could do other position panel uh, settings to make sure that this works for responsive design as well. I'm going to right click on this and obviously this belongs behind the image of Carla. So we're going to choose arrange and send to back. So now we have basically our first slide in this medical related uh, e-learning course. Uh, again, you'd have to do a few things to make it work for responsive design, but this is the basics here. So uh, let's go back to our assets window. So starting from top to bottom, the first section is dedicated to projects. Now, unlike just a theme, which really is just a series of um, colors and formatting choices, as well as some master slides, Adobe is now providing entire uh, what they call quick start projects that are available for your use. And of course, uh, if you're just getting started with e-learning design, this is a great way to jumpstart that work uh, without having to do too much design work. So uh, you can choose from a variety of different slides. So for example, I can choose any of the slides that are part of this Aspire theme here. Uh, but if you keep scrolling down, you'll see it continues to load more slides, part of the Earth series, um, and there's some other sample projects as well. Now, the interesting thing about Adobe Captivate 2019 is you have the ability to import slides using different themes within the same project. And that's a really interesting possibility. So let's say, for example, I really like this welcome slide from the Aspire theme, but maybe I need a slide design that I find in the Earth series, like this one here. So I could select both of those slides and insert those into my project. And you'll see, of course, uh, maintaining the style of the Earth theme as well as the Aspire theme, we've got both of these slides there. So a couple things to point out at this point. You'll notice there's this little clipboard icon. And with the second or possibly more slides that you've inserted this method, you can choose to either use the destination theme or keep the source theme. In addition, you'll notice that in your properties inspector, there is a theme dropdown. So I have my original Perl theme, which is what I started off with when I had that regular blank responsive design project. But I also have the Aspire theme and the Earth theme. So each of these slides comes from a different theme and that can be maintained which is a really interesting thought. I'm not entirely sure how I would use that yet, but knowing that it's available uh, does open up some interesting possibilities. Now, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind. If I'm on, let's say, this Aspire slide here, and I go to my master slide view, I will be seeing the master slides associated with the Aspire theme. So you'll see the look and feel of all of these particular slides. If I exit from the master slide and then go to my Earth theme, or one of the slides from the Earth theme, I can go into master slide view and you'll see a completely different set of master slides. So I think this is really interesting. I think it might create some additional problems that you need to be aware of. Um, but I think it does lead to some interesting possibilities as well. So it should be interesting to see how that all plays out. Let me exit from the master slide and we'll return to the assets window. So in addition to being able to po populate your course with all of these individual slides, you can open up any of these quick start projects as an entire project as well. So for example, if I was creating a course uh, perhaps it was related to, um, you know, working with your fellow employees or something like that. I might choose this league project 
which has uh, certainly an employee corporate kind of look and feel. So I'm going to open this as a new project. So once this is open, of course, you can edit and modify all this placeholder content to satisfy the needs of whatever storyboarded project that you're currently working on. So if you don't have a great deal of experience using Adobe Captivate, this might be an excellent way for you to rapidly build your first e-learning course. Uh, and, you know, obviously there are some benefits even to existing e-learning designers and developers like myself. Uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about in uh, recent weeks and months is, you know, I'd like to get some generic versions of some of my older courses uh, that I've sold to different multiple clients uh, available so that I could sell them as complete projects. Uh, so in the case like this slide here, I might need to modify it uh, without spending a lot of time redesigning not only the uh, fluid box responsive design, but the layout as well. So I have a course that, that deals with uh, creating respect in the workplace. This quick start project might be very appropriate for that, but I'd need to modify a few things because of course in my version of the course, I have six learning objectives as opposed to four. So how would I do that? Well, I can select any one of these, um, these fluid boxes here. Let's uh, just bring in um, this bottom fluid box here. And of course, with uh, the fluid box in question selected, I can add additional fluid boxes to accommodate, in my case, the six learning objectives that I'm trying to create here. So here's two additional fluid boxes. Let's say I'll copy the uh, items from the first fluid box and paste them into the fifth. And I'll do the same thing for number two. We'll take that and we'll paste that into the sixth fluid box. Now, you're going to need to do a couple of things, of course. You're going to want to make sure that the fluid boxes are set up the same as one another. So here's fluid box four, which is sort of the golden colored uh, fluid box that you see on the screen there. Uh, you'll see it's set up to be vertical content flow, squeeze in a column, 100% uh, is the wrap point, and uh, center align stretch to fit for everything else. So let's go down the list, and these are the two fluid boxes that I've added. So I just want to modify those so that they're set up the same as the other fluid boxes and therefore behave the same way as well. Now if I select the parent of all of these fluid boxes, I can also change the way it wraps. Uh, presently, I don't like the way it wraps because it's going to move that last item down to another row by itself, but I would prefer something more symmetrical. So I'm going to choose a symmetrical choice here and that should give me a better layout. You probably noticed that my items are not lined up the same. So I can select, let's say, item 4 here and check the position panel and see that that's 22.7% size-wise. And we'll just do the same thing for my custom versions of these here. And I suppose we should probably relabel these as well. So 0, 0.5 and... 06. So you can very quickly see how you can easily customize this slide, uh, which I didn't design at all. I simply used one of the Quick Start Project slides, and now I have something that's going to work for my content. I just need to fill out the content and, you know, arrange the slides according to my storyboard. So I've returned to my original medical course that I was developing and uh, we're going to launch the assets window again and see what else we have available. So in the uh, Adobe Captivate portion of the assets window, in addition to those projects and individual slides that we've already explored, we have uh, characters as well. So there are a bunch of characters and perhaps there's a character that you wish to use for your project here. Uh, very similar to how it works with eLearning Brothers. If I double click on one of the characters, I can find a character that I wish to add. Uh, let's say we'll use this fellow right here, Dr. So-and-so. And, -so. and uh, again, you can choose close-up, half, or full. And I always like using full. 
and then I get to decide where I cut them off and then I'll use the high resolution version of the image and we can add him to this slide as well so he can be another character within this particular scene that we're creating here so let's just move him off to the side here that looks good back to assets now so you also have some new features within the assets window that w really wasn't there before for you the the next thing of course is icons so as many of you already know images can now be used as buttons in Adobe Captivate and so Adobe has seen fit to give you an assortment of different icons that are available scroll down of course and continue to scroll because it will continue to load more and more icons that are at your disposal and we'll keep going down until we find something appropriate perhaps we just simply want to have an icon for a user or something like that we'll insert this here and that will become a part of our design uh, the icons can be resized of course they're SVG based so they will resize and rescale because they're vector and of course uh, like all vector or SVG based uh, images I can double click on those and change the fill color uh, as needed so I can make that a red person outline and that works quite nicely in addition you also have an assortment of 360 degree assets uh, again scrolling down you'll see more uh, right now there's only about um, nine or so images my hope is that Adobe will continue to make these available but remember of course that the best 360 degree assets are the ones that you're going to import into your projects uh, either VR projects or uh, 360 degree slides uh, like before there was images but again don't forget you can access the uh, Adobe stock images uh, by going to the discover tab but there is some free ones available for you to use on this page uh, like images there's also videos and again Adobe stock also makes additional videos available but at a cost of course uh, there are some audio choices here uh, for those that have used Adobe Presenter Video Express you might recognize some of these uh, these little music tracks uh, but again if you're looking for something to just add a little pizzazz to your e-learning course this is a great option let's just try one here so you might have like just a little introduction music at the beginning of your e-learning course and last but not least you have some updated buttons captivate has been using the same set of old school uh, image buttons that uh, really are showing their age at this point so it's really welcome to see an assortment of new image buttons that are available and you can see they're they're grouped together into different styles my hope is again Adobe will continue to update this list and provide additional choices uh, as we move forward but again you know the the overall I would say that the assets window has been greatly improved there's a lot more choices and certainly a greater selection of resources that you can use for your e-learning projects if you thought this video was useful please share it with your colleagues if you need help with your next e-learning project consider hiring me my focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.